Greetings. This is Justin Allen with the Elite Nurse Practitioner. Welcome to the Elite Nurse Practitioner Show, a podcast dedicated to nurse practitioner entrepreneurism and achieving financial freedom, where I talk directly with nurse practitioners who need help. Listen up. Our market is saturated. Jobs can be scarce. We are underpaid. We are undervalued. We are taken advantage of by the sharks within the healthcare system. And frankly, screw that. Sick of it. And it's time for a change. And listen, I'm here to help make that happen. We are powerful. We can forge a path where we are in control of our career and ultimately our financial and personal well-being. You do not need to submit to healthcare administrators and your doctor overlords. You do not have to take the measly salary. You do not have to work 50 to 60 hours a week. There is a different way, and I'm here to show you that path. This podcast is raw and unfiltered. I have not talked to nurse practitioners in this podcast prior to the call outside of an email exchange to schedule the episode. What you're about to listen to is a consultation session between a nurse practitioner and myself. It is real, it is unscripted, it is unplanned, and I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Anything and everything can happen during our conversation. The nurse practitioners in these episodes are struggling with an issue in their professional or financial life, and they have reached out to me for help. My goal is to help the nurse practitioner with actionable advice that will enhance and improve their professional, business, and financial life. My other goal is to hopefully help my nurse practitioner sisters and brothers build a more productive, powerful, and free life. So I hope the content and information within these podcast episodes does just that. All right, on to the episode. Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be talking to Noreen, who is a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Currently, she operates her own practice full-time and focuses on general psychiatric services. She also has a few non-medical-based businesses she is juggling in the background. Noreen needs assistance figuring out how to be a true entrepreneur and how to focus on businesses inside and outside of healthcare. Hey, Noreen, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Justin? I'm good. Thanks for hopping on here. Yeah, let's get to talking. So this is uh, kind of an interesting episode, Uh, not really talking about problems in your business, but talking about how to be more of a well-rounded entrepreneur. So just tell us a little bit about yourself, how you've been a nurse practitioner for and you know what things you've been doing. Of course. Um, So as you mentioned, my name is Noreen McNally. I've been a nurse practitioner for about close to five years now. I've had my private practice, general private practice in psychiatric, I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner, and I've had that for about five years, as I mentioned. And um, basically just, uh, you know, general practice, I do dual diagnosis, you know, the usual uh, straight up mental health. I also do some uh, substance use as well. And uh, before the pandemic, of course, we were all working in office, or so most of us were. And after the pandemic, we, you know, moved to telehealth. So that's what I'm primarily doing. And I also have other things going on. And uh, my goal today is to just kind of talk to you and understand how can I improve on, you know, my entrepreneurship and how can I grow my other businesses while not neglecting my primary, which is my psychiatric nurse practitioner practice. Sure. Yeah, it's difficult to juggle, you know, multiple businesses at the same time. I think at the high point, I had one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> I mean, it's like five businesses at the same time, something like that. Uh, yeah, I quickly found out that that is not sustainable if you right. value having any kind of sanity or any kind of free time to do anything, you know. Um, right. So anyways, you kind of figure out, you know, where your focus should be, you know, based off two factors, really. I think that the first factor is income, right? I mean, don't focus on businesses that aren't making you any money. Like what's the point? But also self-satisfaction though too, right? So it has to be kind of a balance between both of those. There's no point in beating a dead horse with a business that's just not making any money. Sometimes it's best just to scrap it and move on to the next idea. Right. Uh, So yeah, I feel like it's just one of those things that uh, you just got to figure out over time. So with that said, what businesses do you have right now? So you have the psychiatric practice and then what else? Yes, I do real estate, meaning my husband and I invest in real estate. We rent it out to people and we do have project managers and property managers who handle that. So it's, you know, nothing is ever passive in my opinion. You have to put in some work to it, but it's mostly passive because we cut them a piece of it and they manage it and that's that. The other one, which is now our baby or my baby really is a payments industry, meaning the credit card industry. I, You know, when anyone sees a patient, we have those co-pays. Of course, majority of the money will come from insurance reimbursement, but we still have those co-pays that we have to run. And if anyone is doing any private pays or self-pay, you have to take the payment somehow. Of course, you can take cash, but if they choose to pay by card, 
I set that up in the back end. And that's what I really, 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 truly love doing lately. And, you know, that's what I'm here truly for, to really learn how to manage that while not neglecting my psych practice, because I do love that as well. I also have e-com businesses that I do. And um, we also run a family business, an electrical family business as well. So my hands are all over the place. I can tell you my primary focus are just the two right now. But of course, the other ones are pulling me in. But I just need to figure out how to narrow down and focus on, as you said, what is bringing me the income. Gotcha. So walk me through a typical day for you outside of the psych practice for the, you know, the, the billing payment processing thing. Oh, are you ready? It's wild. Oh, okay. So I, I get up <laughs> at 4 a.m. <laughs> you, said, you said you enjoy doing it. So that's why I I'm love kind of just it. here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you just kind of walk me through kind of, uh, you know, what a typical day is for that sure. while juggling, I guess, the psych business. Yes. So I do walk around my, you know, uh, nine to two type of, you know, seeing patients in the office. So after that, it's mostly talking to business owners, meaning I literally go out and meet business owners. You would see me do sales. I would have never thought I would ever do sales in my life when I was in, you know, in my younger years. I despised sales until I realized we all have to do sales and market ourselves somehow. And then this business is literally pulling me into doing sales. So I literally walk into businesses, introduce myself. I focus on local businesses. I introduce myself. I tell them what products they have, you know, just to tell them that I can lower their rates. Think of it as when you have a mortgage and your rate initially was, I don't know, 6% or 5% because you just had bad credit or just you got a bad deal or that was a deal at that point. I come in or you try to refinance and get a lower rate, meaning, you know, it's just a lower rate, nothing else to it. So that's what I do. I go to business owners, meet them, tell them what I have, tell them what products I have, how we can save them money. And, you know, sometimes they tell me I'm all set with what we have. No, thank you. Sometimes they tell me come back in a week or two and we can have a chat. Sometimes they tell me a good old hard no. And then, you know, you just take that and move on. So it's a lot of legwork. And I also am trying now to branch into networking instead of really putting in my physical time going to so many businesses because it, it is taking a lot of my physical time. I do have little ones as well. So I have to take that into consideration as well. And um, I'm now wanting to focus on reaching more people without having to go out physically to them. Gotcha. Okay. Important point there is the sales and marketing aspect. So it doesn't matter what kind of business that you operate, you're going to have to accept the fact that you're going to have to do some selling. Like Correct. you just do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a medical practice, payment processing, selling cupcakes, it doesn't matter, right? Like you, you have to be okay with that fact. There's going to be some sales, some marketing involved. You're going to have to hustle and put yourself out there. So yeah, so that's a really, really good point. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Like you don't really think you'd ever do that, but then when no. you start kind of getting into it, you're like, this is kind of fun. It, it is. I enjoy it. You know, I never thought I would. At the beginning, you feel, oh my gosh, someone will think I'm a total imposter. Who is this person just walking in? And you just get to a point where you tell yourself, I'm just going to make a conversation with this business owner because I am also a business owner. You know, I shouldn't be too scared and no one should be too scared talking to me when they come to me. I'm just a regular Josh Moore, right? And you know, that's the mentality I'm trying to have as well when I go into a business owner, if they own a restaurant, right? And they say, hey, do you have 10 minutes or five minutes? Can I spare, you know, can you spare five minutes of your time so I can show you what I have? You know, it's the same thing as if someone came to my practice and they told me, I have this product, you know, this medical product or whatever they have. Can you give me five minutes of your time? You know, and, and I can tell you right now, I have so much respect for people who do sales full time. You know how you get those calls on the phone and it's always a telemarketer. Believe it or not, I listen to them because I know the pain. I feel the pain and I'm always so polite. I typically don't hang up anymore unless they're really persistent and then it becomes ridiculous. Yeah, it's hard. It's not easy, especially mm -hmm. cold calling. It's right. um, very difficult. You have to develop a very, very thick skin for it. I did telemarketing back when I was like in college for, for a year or two. And uh, it's really? hard. Yeah. You can make good money, but it's hard, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. So you're doing that on the side. You're seeing mm -hmm. patients for, it sounds like anywhere between four to six hours a day, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, you're doing that in between, I'm assuming. Um, yes. Now, what kind of revenue are you generating doing that? So it, it's pretty, actually, it's pretty good. So my husband and I are both doing it together and, you know, we're bringing into the, it's a family business right now we're doing together, but it really can get 
good, right? Depends on the amount of clients you have. So we're looking at probably, I don't know, 20, 30 grand a month just doing it. And we're both doing it on on the side as well. So as that's hard profit. as it is, that's yes, that's, that's, our, that's our take home. Yes, that's our take home. Okay. Well, I know. I mean, I think <laughs> it's changing here. a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You should definitely stay focused on that. Hell. Uh, we are. We are. We are. Right. Um, really, we want to write it to whatever level we possibly oh, can. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Milk that for as long as you can. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, that's one thing about businesses. That's like very, very rarely do you ever just start a business and then that business just sits there for 20, 30 years. Like, right. That very rarely ever happens. Like businesses come and go, things change, partnerships happen, you sell the business, you know, things are always evolving. So, um, so yeah, I say milk that for as long as you possibly can, because, you know, who knows? The financial industry is very highly regulated. Things change regularly. Yeah. Same thing with medicine, healthcare, you know, things change all the time, you know? You know, like with uh, the DEA and the whole telemedicine thing and the controlled substances, like you have to pivot, right? Like you have to right. change ways and figure it out, right? So it's it's never static. It's never just start it and sit on it and don't do anything. So yeah, milk that hell, twenty thirty thousand dollars a month. I mean, you could, and it's actually growing, believe it or not, because now my husband's doing it even more. So he is an electrician, you know, family business, et cetera. And we are realizing the money. I mean, we, we make very good living, both of us, you know, we could survive. But now we are realizing there's more money here. And as much as it's a lot of work, but we're willing to put in the work right now to just, you know, as you're saying, you know, bank as much as we can, put it away, put it in investments, you know, stocks, et cetera, that we do as well. So, yeah. You know, and then if it, if it dries up, it dries up. Then we we had a good run. (laughs) Right. It's not a big deal. Right. Right. Exactly. That's why I recommend having multiple businesses. That's why it's a principle, the elite NP model that I made. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That that model I designed, like multiple businesses, you can't just rely on one business because something happens to that one business and you don't have a job. What are you going to do? Like, drowning. You're right. drowning, right? Unless you have right. a lot of money saved up. Yeah. Right. So it's just good common financial sense. So so yeah, I say milk that, put the mm-hmm. money away, invest yes. it in real estate, invest it in the stock market, bonds. You know, bonds are paying four or five percent right now. I mean, it's a pretty good return. Oh. And it's yeah, it's guaranteed money. Like they're gonna get paid back the principal plus five percent. Like it's a no-brainer, you know? Okay. Um, yeah. So so yeah, so I would be investing this stuff, let the money grow. You know, that's how you build right. you know, long-term wealth. Yeah. Now in terms of the psych business. So I'm assuming you enjoy that too. You don't want to. I love it. You love it. I love it. I can't give it up if I wanted to. I can't. It keeps me sane. It keeps me up. I mean, it keeps me going, not up at night. I mean, that would be bad. It keeps me going. It gives me a reason to actually get up and wanting to assist and help and be there. And, you know, in the process, you're also helping yourself, right? Right, right, right. So I would not want to give that up. I, I tried hiring someone for a short term, of course, it was wonderful until they also want to start their own practice, which I completely understand and I respect. And I wouldn't expect anything from them other than that, because I also started my own practice. So it's just the, you know, retention part of it. I had someone, she was my student at some point, wonderful, can't say enough things about her, but she is smart. So she she did decide to start her own practice and I actually helped her set up her own practice. And I'm helping her with the payments of doing her own practice. So it's a win-win in a way because I met her. I'm now, I made some money from her while she was working with me. And then now with the payments, I also um, set her up with that as well. Gotcha. Okay, cool. How much are you making with the psych practice a month? How much are you bringing? It's actually, home? it's actually really well, same thing. I'm actually bringing in thirty grand, twenty eight to thirty grand a month. But I'm working literally. I'm up working, seeing patients and patients, and patients, and um, yep, yeah, actually twenty eight to thirty grand a month. I just did my calculations not too long ago. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Obviously, don't throw that away either. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you're bringing in almost, you know well over half a million dollars a year with just these two businesses. Just Um, the two. Right, right, right. So obviously you want to keep focusing on these. You like them and they're, you know, generating significant income. So with that said, Mm -hmm. what other businesses do you have and how much time are you spending on those businesses? So the real estate, not too much time. Honestly, it's just a quick report every two weeks, you know, just an Excel sheet we get and everything is flowing. Tenants are in. We actually rent out to students or doctors. We have it, you know, we have four locations situated close to either a large university or a large hospital and we're working with you know travel agencies to kind of get those filled up 
and we're actually getting more than we would have if we were doing it on our own. So that's running itself, essentially. Then we have e-commerce stores, a Walmart store and an Amazon store. We, I say we because we both do this. My husband and I are at the same speed. It's amazing. We're literally on the same speed with investments and entrepreneurship, which is very unique. But I have an Amazon store, I have an, uh, a Walmart store. I don't run it myself probably once a week, not probably, but once a week I do get a report from my e-commerce team who tell me this is what we've done for sales, this is what your profit is, this is what, you know, returns, etc. Just a quick report. Do I look at it much? No, I just focus on the money coming in. How much am I making from this and how much do I need to invest more? And that's it. And I, I give them a cut of every, you know, it's a 70-30 split. And I am a firm believer of, um, you know, just taking a piece of the pie. I never want the whole pie, you know, in some situations. Of course, with Psych, I wanted the whole pie. It's my baby. But everything else, I take a piece of the pie. I don't want to be greedy at all. So if someone else could do the work for me and take part of it, even though I invested at the beginning, I don't mind doing that if the math makes sense. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm mostly focusing on. So someone else is running it. I'm investing capital and I'm making the higher percentage of it. Gotcha. So with that said, each one of those, how much are you making a month? For the Walmart store is the best one. I'm making about not you know, best for e-commerce probably five to seven thousand a month depending on you know is it december where everyone's shopping or is it september or whatever you know seasonal we're looking at between five to seven a month gotcha and the other end and literally i'm not doing much with it i'm literally just well we have yeah. information it's just cycling in how many hours a week are you spending on that not even an hour well keep it <laughs> i mean <laughs> You know, well, why the hell wouldn't you? It, it was a lot of work at the beginning, though. A lot of work at the beginning. I remember staying up so late every time, just getting sure. it because they, they are strict with all these regulations and requirements. It's insane. But if you get through that and you have to put in heavy amount at the beginning, obviously you're investing capital, you know, to buy all the equipment and whatever else they're selling. So, but after you get that hump, I've had it for one and a half years. So the first three or four months were a little rocky. We're just setting up, getting to get things situated for a year straight. I think I've been bringing in five to 7,000 a month on just one store. The other one, Amazon's a little bit competitive. So we make less because obviously everyone shops in Amazon and everyone's selling on Amazon. We make just my store probably, I don't know, three, maybe four thousand a month best case scenario i don't think i've seen more than five you know when it's really heavy yeah so and it just runs itself and that's gross i mean i'm sorry that's net that's what i'm getting in my back that's not even the gross that's my net how much is it uh four thousand for amazon okay, gotcha. gotcha and then about seven five to seven for walmart i got you okay i mean that takes very little of your time as well almost no time no time at all right i mean yes keep doing that yeah so you're bringing in ten, twelve thousand dollars a month on these, you know, on this this business that's taking less than an hour time. Uh, yes. a, a week, yeah. right? Yeah, a week. right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, could you grow that? Do you feel like you could scale I, it? The ecom. Correct. Like, like, how much time I, do you think you'd have to put into it to start generating, let's say, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month? You know what? I can't because it depends on the sales. So right. the team handles the sales, the marketing, all the things in the back end. I haven't really looked into it, to be quite honest. I don't think they need anything more from me. There's nothing more I could say, let's put in two hours a week and then there's nothing. There's okay. Capital is available. Everything is available. So what they do simply is they buy a bunch. People buy. It's just retail, right? It depends on how many people walk in through the door that, you know, will know if you had 5,000 sales or will have 10,000 sales because it's a holiday and everyone's shopping. Sure. And, okay. You know, so then they, you can't really scale it. So, you know, I'd say just no. milk that for as long as you possibly can do. Right. right. Like, yeah. Okay. Right. And then the property management business, you're generating about how much or, you know, the real estate, how much you make in a month off that. Let me, let me think it through here. I don't think I've really looked at those numbers yet for the year. Not too much, actually. We're probably bringing in maybe... Or maybe five. I'm just looking at the numbers quickly right now. This is net now. Um, four to five between those four properties. And it could be a little bit off, but four to five between those four properties. But that's very hands-off kind of a thing. I mean, that's more of an investment. Yes. 
right? Yes. I mean, it's yes, that's long term. Yeah, yeah, that's thing about real estate. It's kind of a passive business, but it's more like an investment slash business, you know? Yes. Like where you yes. put your money in. It. Yeah. Obviously, you want to keep doing that. You want to funnel the money that you're making from you know all these other businesses into more real estate. Just have a diversified portfolio, right? Real Correct. estate, stocks, bonds, cash you know, some precious right. metals, you know, things like that. Just very, very diversified. I probably mm -hmm. say about 30, 30 to 40% of my net worth is probably in real estate. So oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That number is slightly going down because I've been putting a lot more money in like bonds and, you know, various stocks. Um, okay. Just because the market's very volatile right now. And so mm -hmm. I like to put my money in during the dips. You know, right. they, say, they say you can't buy the dip. The Buy the dip, correct. Like people, <laughs> they say you can't, you know, time the market, but in my opinion, it's bullshit. Yes, you can. Right. Buy the dip. Don't buy on green days. Buy on red days. Like it's not hard. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and right. hold. And just hold, hold it. Don't right. panic. Exactly. exactly. Don't right. sell. Don't buy right. high and sell low. People are fools. They do it all the time. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, so anyways, though, yeah, so that's kind of what you need to be doing. So it sounds like you know where your focuses need to be. I mean, so what's the most scalable business here? Um, the payments one. The payment one, yeah. It's the payment, because with the psych, I want to keep it small. As weird as that sounds, I want to keep it exactly where it is. I enjoy what you know that number right now. I'm not looking to grow, scale that at all. To be quite honest with you, I'm looking to scale the payments industry because I know I can. You know, I'm more focused on that right now. I want to. I know there's growth in it. I know there's there's potential in it. So that's where we're putting most of our dollars into the marketing, all these things. Yeah. So. Just getting away from the hands-on. We already have, what, four people working with us right now, kind of going out to, you know, the work. And it's all commission-based. So it's what they bring to the table. We do, again, the pie, right? A, a slice of the pie. I don't want the whole pie ever. So I give them a little. I take a little. Everyone's happy. But I do want to scale the uh, the payments industry. That's where my focus is. And if I can help any nurse practitioners or providers out here or anyone in the medical field. And the good thing is that everyone takes payments. It doesn't matter what kind of store you are. It doesn't matter what kind of practice you are. Someone accepts payments somehow. It's not just the mom and pop store where you come in and you swipe a good old fashioned card. We have e-commerce stores, right? People who sell, I don't know, shoes online, makeup online, hair products, whatever you have, even you know, we have IV clinics. I have a client who has an IV clinic and she's all cash based, right? No one's taking insurance there. Someone has to come in, either they make a payment through the website, you go on, you click whatever you want, and then you go in for the appointment. Someone has to connect that in the back end, right? right. To make everything make sense. Sure, you want an IV, just normal saline, that's all you want, fine. But when you click that, whatever the number is, $100, $80, $120, whatever the number is, it has to be connected in the back. So my team does that. And it's not just me. Like I am literally the agent, right? I'm the vehicle who connects you to the bank. I'm not the bank. You still have that 800 number to call if you need to 24-hour support. I'm not the guy you're calling directly. I'm the boots on the ground, if you will, right? I'm just a face. Uh, you know, for example, Square, right? Everyone knows of Square. Everyone, you know, I see a lot of back and forth about Square, right? Or even Clover, whatever, you know, people are using. Or, or Stripe. Stripe is another one, right? Someone in the back end is handling, you know, when you call, when you reach out to, please help me with this, I'm starting a business or I'm switching over, you talk to an agent. I am one of those agents, right? And then they have Stripe, who they go to. The difference is that when you come to me, I don't just work with one company. I work with all of the above. Well, at least 90% of all of the above. So what I do is I go to them. I say, hey, I have John Doe who has a business this size. You know, we get a little bit of info. Obviously, we have to know what kind of business you are and how much volume you're looking at. I look at my portfolio. I say, based on what you've told me, it takes two seconds to decide that. Based on what you've told me, these are the rates that we can offer you. And these are the companies you can work with. We go back to them. They give us, they already give us the best rates. They give us a flat rate. And then from there, that's when we decide, you know, am I giving you the buy rate, which I can't because obviously I'm running a business as well, right? If you go to Stripe, for example, Stripe will probably charge you what is it 2.9 or 3.5% it, it stopped Something counting like they're, they're right. so high I don't... right right so what i do is i have a buy rate i lower that rate like my rates right now for you know online transactions would be about 2.7 and i can even go lower a little bit depending on the volume so 2.7% and then 10 cents per transaction 
you know, you go to Stripe or Square, they'll say if it's online transaction, it'll be 3.5% plus whatever, or even 2.9% plus something. It doesn't look like a big number when you, you know, you're looking at it from the surface, but it is a big number. You're looking at hundreds depending on your volume, right? Because it's percentage of the volume you're doing. So those are the things that I do. Uh, and that's why, I, you know, I, I would like to see if you can, you know, shed some light as to how I can market towards not just the medical community, you know, that's awesome. I can provide this. I understand, you know, the lingo, I understand the needs, but also to others, you know, not just medical. It's great. I can definitely help medical. We can integrate into EMRs, et cetera, coaches, this and that. But at the same time, just kind of breaking into giving my time towards many as opposed to giving my time towards one at a time, which I'm doing right now, you know, with, uh, with going to store to store. All right. I hope everyone's enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick break to thank everyone listening and also give a big thank you to all of my social media followers and email subscribers. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our email list at www.elitenp.com and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Email subscribers will receive updates on new weekly podcast episodes, multiple weekly articles we publish, new courses, and everything else related to helping you succeed. Remember, all elite nurse practitioner courses are designed to help you build a niche practice, increase your financial strength, and to break free from the rat race. If I can break free and the other countless nurse practitioners can break free, then so can you. Additionally, please share this podcast with your other nurse practitioner sisters and brothers out there. The more NPs that venture out on their own, the stronger our profession will become. Now, let's get back to the episode. Well, I mean, this is going to be, you know, figuring out who your target demographic is and maybe having multiple DBA kind of uh, named entities that specialize in payment processing for clinics, payment processing for bowling alleys, like whatever, you know what I mean? Like it has to be very, very specifically tailored to a specific market. What I think I would do is, is I would try to figure out who that is. Like, sure, medical practices, that makes sense, you know. But overall, though, like, who is it that you really want to market to and talk to? It's essentially who's going to be the best for business, right? Right, I mean, right. Right, right, right. Like, who's going to rake up the charges so I get my commission or whatever, right? Of course. Right. So anyways, though, I think your best bet would probably be create like a couple DBAs. Okay. And make it specific towards a very specific target demographic, for example. Okay. And then market to those people. So it can be something as simple as like just a Google search ad, you know, like, I mean, people are going to be on Google typing in, you know, payment Mm -hmm. processing for insert Mm -hmm. business, you know what I mean? Insert the type of business. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So maybe experiment a little bit with that. Maybe have some sort of article, blog, video kind of service where you talk about this stuff so you can just organically get some people to start following you basically and, you know, ask you for services. Direct mail. You can go on Upwork.com and okay. you can find people who can make a very, very specific tailored list of businesses mm-hmm. that meet a certain criteria. Okay, Kind of a leads, uh, Ex- leads list or something. Exactly. Right. Okay. So like, you, yeah, so you go to Upwork. And you would type in, you know, like a direct mail list, need someone to, you know, build a list of 1000 businesses that meet this criteria. So bowling alleys, for example, sure, like, sure. you know, yeah, like who cares, right? It's just, it's, right. it's, it's whatever, right? right? So hunting stores, bowling alleys, you know, IV clinics, whatever. And mm-hmm. so then you would get that list and you just create a, like a direct mailer and just mail it to them. Even if just like one or 2% respond, who cares? Yeah. You spend a few thousand dollars on it. And it was a well worth investment, right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking that way you could probably do that as well. You as the owner of this business and, you know, driving new business into it. I mean, it's marketing, 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 right? I mean, it's Mm -hmm. just the number one function of any kind of business. I don't care if it's a clinic. It just is. So, you know, anyone listening to this that doesn't want to do their own marketing, I highly urge you to understand how to just do some basic marketing. You as the business owner really need to understand that. It sounds like you do. So I would say start there. I'd say do some do some market research and uh, you know just start market researching on various businesses. See how much revenue is generated per business. 
because that's ultimately going to affect, you know, the credit card transaction rates for you and how much you're going to make. Course. So start looking at like just general revenue projections for certain kinds of businesses, what their needs are, that sort of a thing. And then just go from there. You know, you Google, there's statistics on basically anything. You know what I mean? Right. That's a good thing about the payments too. Everyone takes payments. Everybody I just pick a niche and go with it. I do have a virtual assistant who sometimes we have downtime and I, you know, cross it over and just say, do you have, you know, two or three hours this week? Why don't you dedicate towards this particular assignment, you know, you know, crossing into my other business, the payments. And sometimes I do ask her to, you know, do a radius search of, you know, businesses in the area. I haven't really done the niche one, which is really good. I should actually, um, I'll actually look into that and ask her to help me with that because I do have her at my disposal right now to help me with that. And she's wonderful. So I can, I can do a search, see what, you know, who will bring me more or who makes more sense in terms of, you know, pursuing and see if she can at least start with it. And then, of course, I'll add on to the app work, see who can actually generate me a better list than what she can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use Not Upwork. It. I use the hell out of Upwork. Really? Do you prefer Upwork or Fiverr? Fiverr, which one uh, would you? I think I, Upwork is better. I think it's, I don't know. I think, yeah, say. exactly. Like, especially on like the, the Elite MP Facebook group. People take, you know, say Fiverr, Fiverr, Fiverr. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's more professional technical people on Upwork. I always get, okay. I've always gotten better work off Upwork, to be perfectly honest with you. Like, I feel like the true professionals are on there. I feel like the college okay. kids are on Fiverr. I see. Know? Right. <laughs> I guess yeah. it's a stepping stone until you get up to the Upwork, right? Uh, upper level. Right. Like, it's just Maybe. a college kid making some, you know, right. yeah, making some graphics or whatever. Like, but off Upwork, like, I feel like you get like a true professional with years of experience and, uh, how, you know, one hell of a resume. How much do you think that might cost me to, you know, for so something I've, like that, yes, you think? Yes, yeah, so I've done that before. It cost me like 800 bucks. It wasn't okay. that much. And okay. like they gave me like 5,000 business addresses. Like it was just oh. a ridiculous amount. Very specific, very tailored to what I was looking for. So, okay. um, yeah, and it resulted in business. So I think you should start there and then, you know, make a couple of websites and some DBAs focusing on a specific business. Okay. Now, with the list that you had, did you mail it to them? Did you email? How did you... Talk yeah. About. So then, then what you do is that you find a direct mailing company that does a lot of that work for you. So then okay. you would provide them the list and be like, all right, here you go. This is the graphic that I want you to send with the content, print it off, okay. mail it for me. That's going to cost you a few thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Like you give them everything. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. And then they usually do the rest. Cause I mean, it's just busy work for you to do that. You know, you right. want to do that. Yeah. So just hire someone to do that. There's plenty of companies. You just Google direct mailers. I mean, there's the hundreds of companies, you know what I mean? So anyway, so you could do that. Um, I think it's probably a good stepping stone for you. I mean, I feel like mm-hmm. that to be a true entrepreneur here, you have to have a vision. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to have this vision of what it is that you see your business life being like in, you know, one year, two years, five years, 10 years. Like, you know, where do you see yourself? Where's this vision? I mean, you, there's a big difference mm-hmm. between being an entrepreneur and just being self-employed, right? Mm-hmm. Being self-employed is like what you are, like at your site practice. Right. Like you're the one that sees patients. You are a employee of that business, basically. Yes. You know what I mean? You're working in your business. You know, Correct. like you are a, right. You're not necessarily a slave to the business, but you are an employee to right. your business, right? Right. You're working in it. You're working for it. That's what a self-employed person is. The majority of nurse practitioners who start their practice, start a business. They start one practice. They never do much else after that. You are a self-employed person. You're not really an entrepreneur. A true entrepreneur has grand visions, big business, you know, ideas, multiple businesses, like a true entrepreneur. And so you are a true entrepreneur here. I mean, you have multiple businesses, multiple ideas. You're there. Okay. Like, I mean, you're just naturally there. You you either got it or you don't, you know, you you can learn how to do it, but like the ambition can't be learned. You know, you have or you don't. So yeah, it sounds like you have that. Like I have that, you have that. Plenty of people listening to this right now have that. So Like my brother never had the ambition, you know, like just some people just don't have it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone's different. Of course. You know? Right. Being of a course. self-employed. Yeah. Being a self-employed nurse practitioner, owning a practice and making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. That's that's really good. It's good. It's a good living. It's a good way. Right. To, right. Instead of being employed. You pay a few bills, right? Right. You pay your bills. You save right. your best. Exactly. Yeah. Take but a the true. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. But the true entrepreneur, though, like millions of dollars is kind of a goal. Right. 
Yeah. So that's where I'm hoping to get, right? You know, right now, as you as you rightfully mentioned, I am working for my business, both of them, you know, the, the two, the main ones. I mean, the rest are, you know, generating what they're generating. It's fine. That's, you know, neither here nor there. But the ones that I really want to, the, the, my babies, the, the focus here are obviously the psych business, which right now I'm literally working in it. And it would right. be great. I had a vision of the business working for me at some point. And then I realized I have to deal with employees. I have to deal with all this, which... Yeah. I, you know, and then them calling out and, you know, because life yeah. does happen, right? And then you have to yeah. worry about that. Then you're, you're directed somewhere else and then now you have to come back and see, pay, or how do you cover that, right? Or, you yeah. know, the reputation of your business is just well, too many moving pieces. Right. Having employees is, it's a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> yes. It just is. It's right. It is. It's probably the toughest part of owning a business or running a business. It is. If you ask any business owner what they hate the most, they're going to probably say managing my employees, like dealing with my employees, you know? And it is the most important thing too. And it's the most important thing. Exactly. You know, so it's one of those things. It's just, it's a necessary evil. But if you've got a good team and you've got people that are self thinkers and self doers, then it's not bad. Like my men's mm-hmm. health clinic, my employees, they're self-thinkers, they're self-doers. Good. They very, very rarely ever message or call me, hey, Justin, we have a problem. Like okay. there, There'll be days, I'm not joking you, three, four uh-huh. days in a row where I don't hear a single thing from my men's health clinic. It's just running itself. It's great, right? That's excellent. Right. But I have a doer there though. I have a thinker there, like my office manager, the guy that you know, help me start this business. Like he uh-huh. is the brain behind the, like he operates that thing and I don't have to think about it or worry about it. Right. Excellent. So yeah, you have to have one of those leaders inside your business to do that, take it off the plate. Okay. So it can be hard to find that person and there might be some trial and error finding that person. But once you find that person, they are worth their weight in gold. Okay. So of course. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, you know, your psych practice, you could definitely scale this thing. I mean, you're gonna have to hire another nurse practitioner. You probably have to hire receptionist slash office manager kind of person, but mm. it should be able to work for you if that's what you wanted, or if you wanted to grow it and just, you know, keep your patient census and right. then start growing, you know, growing the patient census and have another provider start taking those patients off your hands, then that's an option too, right? That's what I do with my right. men's health clinic. I just okay. started like all new patients now go to the new nurse practitioner. I don't want to see any more new patients. Right. Okay. That's what I did, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can just slowly build that, you know, other nurse practitioner census up and then try to get someone in there to help run that business for you. And then it starts becoming less and less and less work for you. And then you could either focus your energies on the payment processing thing, grow that as something that's, you know, 50, 60,000 a month, 70, 80,000, $100,000 a month, you know, get it up to mm-hmm. a point where you're like, okay, mm-hmm. I have so much liquid money to right. invest in this business now. Now is the time to hire and train someone to take over my job, okay. right? Okay. Take over what, right. Take over what you're doing. Okay. And so right now is the critical step in your business where you are writing your processes down, figuring out your procedures, creating scripts on how to approach businesses, cold calling, like everything that you are doing, you need to record okay. or write down. This is how okay. you develop a policies and procedures manual. Like I get people all the time email me. Do you have a policy and procedure manual for this? Do you have a policy and mm-hmm. procedure manual for that? No, I don't. You are the one that needs to write a policy and procedures manual. I don't know how you operate a business. I don't know. Right. You, know you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know how you see patients. I don't know how you do things. Like, this is something right. that, as you as the business owner need to write. You could buy blanket, just templated policies and procedures. That's fine. But you still need to write them to fit your, you know, to fit your own style. Customize, right? Right, right, right. 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 Like, right, right, exactly. Like, like, you know, a lot of our courses have, basic policies and procedures in them. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, though, you still have to write your own. Like that's part of a business. And so that's, that's what true. you, yeah, that's what you need to do right now with this payment processing thing. And even maybe your psych practice is to start developing those procedures, those policies. That way someone else can take this over and just hit the ground running. Boom. You know what I mean? So that's uh, a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've had to do that with Elite NP and a lot of different things. Like I just could not there's just some things I just don't have time to do anymore. And so right. I created videos and, you know, more technical back end kind of stuff. And I have a, you know, a virtual assistant that helps me with all that stuff. I made those policies. I made those procedures and someone else is helping me. Same with my men's health clinic. So, so that's your next step. So for the videos, did you also use Upwork? Because I have been looking at, um, you know, one of those uh, uh, whiteboard handwriting something, you know, one of those explainer videos. 
so I do have, you know, steps of how do you, you know, what is matching processing? What is this? How do you start this? I kind of have something like that. But would you also delegate that to someone in Upwork and just say, can you just do me, do a video yeah, and so, do a voiceover or something of that nature? No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. So when okay. you are the one, when you're doing it, when you're working mm-hmm. on something in your business okay. and you're doing it, you're like, I'm sick of doing this. I want someone else to do this for me. Okay. So just go to like loom.com and loom just, videos. Re- right. Exactly. Just start recording what you're doing on your screen. Okay. Literally start okay. recording, talk in the mic, your thought process, what it is that you're doing, and then okay. give that video to someone on Upwork and be like, write me a procedure and they'll do it for you. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That way there's a written procedure plus the video. And then you just put okay. that on the back end, like a Google Drive or whatever. Okay. And now you have like this procedural database, right? All right. And then whoever you hire can just click on that, get in there and learn how to do it and do it themselves. That way you're not doing all this busy crap anymore. Right, right. It's it's those little things. So then, you know, it piles up and you think I'll do it later. And then it just piles it just up and you forget done. about it. And right. it never exactly. gets done. It, it just gets, gets piled done. on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like it just never gets done. Like my workman's comp insurance. I forgot to renew it. So it's just like, <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Six months later, I'm like, oh, crap. I didn't renew my workman's comp insurance. (laughs) Whoops. You know? So you can start focusing on more of that stuff that's necessary to operate your business when you start offloading more of that busy work, right? So, um, yeah. So to be a true entrepreneur, I think you got to get to that point. But you're doing what every entrepreneur does during the initial few years. Right. right. You do the work. You do the legwork. You develop those procedures. You develop your business model. And then it takes it to the next level. So. Okay. Anyone listening, you know, I'm sorry, but it's not easy. It's work. It's if this, right. If this was easy, everyone would be a millionaire. Okay. It's, right. It's just right. Not, right. So yeah, it's work and it sucks. I tell you like re- recording those videos yeah. and writing this stuff, uh, uh, it, it's not fun. It is yeah. boring and tedious. Right. Right. It's part of the game. End goal, right? Just focusing yeah. on the end goal, right? Focus on the end goal. Exactly. But once they're done, they're done. Excellent. You know? Yeah. So right. I think, yeah, I think that's where you need to be probably focusing your energies on uh, moving forward here. I'd say we'll focus do. on your site practice, payment processing, the other stuff. Yeah, just let it sit there and just do its right. thing. You know, start, you know, invest your money in the property management business, you know, the real estate stuff, you know, keep investing in that. Let it slowly grow over time. That's more of, that's your nest egg, right? That's for the kids, right? I always say it's kids. for the kids. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like I have real estate and various, you know, entities and stuff and they're just, yeah. you know, passive income streams, little rentals, whatever, you know, it just builds my empire, right? It's just part of it. So yeah, I'd say just focus on those things and you should be, you should be a millionaire within the next year or two, I would imagine. I mean, hell, the money you're making right now, you should be pretty, <laughs> pretty close, okay? Like what it's I have coming. found, it's coming, uh-huh. yeah. What I've found is that for a true entrepreneur who's investing money back in their business and growing it, what I have found is that usually you will see a 1.5 to two times revenue growth every one to two years, okay? Okay, okay. That's what I typically have seen, and that's what I've experienced myself. That's what many mentors have told me. If you're investing money into your business, you should see this growth. You should see a growth of 1.5 to 2x revenue on a one to to two-year basis. So that means if you keep doing what you're doing and you start investing money back in your business, develop these procedures and these policies and this sort of thing, within Mm -hmm. one to two years, you will be over that million-dollar hump. I guarantee it. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'll call you and tell you. Yeah. There you go. And tell you. (laughs) Right, as soon as I get it, I'll tell you. Yeah, no, 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 Dad, definitely do. Anything else you like to talk about? No, um, no, that's pretty much it. And um, again, I just go back to um, the payments industry that I, I want to, you know, the matching processing that I really want to put in the front line. And uh, if anyone out here wants to have me take a look at their rates, it doesn't cost you anything. It's just a quick, hey, Noreen, this is what I'm paying right now. What do you think? Right? No big deal. Let me know. And um, I'm not sure if I can give my info, but maybe it'll be in the um, however you eh, You can drop it. an email address real quick. I don't care. Yes. It'll be info at capstonepaymentsolutions.com. And I'm sure it's going to be in the description somewhere. I can yeah. send that to you as well. So, But either way, I'm also on Facebook on your group. So I'm sure uh, they can always uh, oh, yeah. DM me from there as well. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll get some messages. Um, Excellent. Well, cool. I liked any episodes with you asking me a question. Have you had any uh, any questions for me? No, I think we talked about it all. I, I love the uh, uh, the idea of the app work and the DBAs. I never thought of the DBAs at all, you know, just for, you know, the SEO and Google search. I've thought of landing pages before, but DBA not yet. So I'll, I'll look into that 
um, and direct mail genius because you know most this will go to business owners they'll hold it in their hand they'll put it you know hopefully they'll open it and uh, take a look at it and even sure. if they get five percent as you're saying or two percent back it's better than uh, nothing and it should make the 800 or whatever the number is i spent back from that and um, oh, the easy. video idea is great as well i'll spend some time on that i think i'll wait a little bit maybe a month to clean up a few things, do the direct mail things, and then go back to Bloom and spend some time there. There you go. Sounds like a plan to me. All right. Yeah, well, listen, it was, absolutely. It was a pleasure talking to you and I uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much, Justin. All Take right. care. Take care. Bye. All right. I hope everyone enjoyed the episode with Noreen. Fascinating episode. You know, this is the definition of an entrepreneur, guys. Like, you know, you just don't have just one little practice and just leave it at that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being a self-employed nurse practitioner. It is better than working for someone and it is the faster path to wealth. So if that's what your goal is, great. Okay. Fantastic. We need more self-employed people. We just do. But if you truly want the big money, okay, you have to develop being a true entrepreneur. Okay? You have to develop that mindset. And that mindset is growth, scaling, multiple businesses. You have a vision for your business. You have a vision for your life. Noreen's there, she's multiple businesses. She is killing it. You know, I think it's a great diversifier for having businesses outside of healthcare. I certainly do. You know, healthcare is a highly regulated field. Things change. Finance is highly regulated. I mean, there are just lots of fields that are highly regulated. And so it's a good idea to diversify your businesses. Don't be all in on healthcare, okay? It's a good idea to have some businesses outside of healthcare. All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to the show. Quick legal disclaimer, the content of this podcast is meant for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be used as legal, financial, medical, regulatory, or practice specific advice. For information pertaining to your specific legal, financial, medical, or practice specific needs, please be sure to consult with your lawyer, CPA, medical director, and or your state's practice laws and the most up-to-date clinical guidelines. As always, do your due diligence when it comes to any information found online and in podcasts. The content of this podcast is copyrighted by Galaxy Medical Southwest 2023 and cannot be duplicated, rebroadcasted, or reproduced with out our written permission.